Okay, if you've had an episode of back pain or you've had chronic back pain and you've got weakness in your lower back, so weakness right down deep in your lower back, so the muscles that go in your lower back, they're weak, not just core weakness, but actual physical weakness, and you've done your core work or you've been doing some core exercises to strengthen it up, and you're trying to or wanting to return to things like deadlifts and squats and lifting, there's some exercises that sit in between there. So from sort of abdominal core work to lifting, there's a bit of a bridge you've got to jump. So I'm going to give you three things to try and do. Now this is specific for people who've actually got spinal muscle weakness. Not just back pain or anything like If you've got strong muscles, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you've got weak muscles, then this is definitely for you. Because it goes really well with all the abdominal stuff that you've been doing. And that, together, is going to help you work on things like hinging through your hips, moving into deadlifts and your squats. Okay, so I'm going to use three things. One's a bench you'll need at home, maybe a sofa, bed. BOSU's really handy. You can substitute that with some pillows and then a Swiss ball. Okay, and again, you could probably substitute that with a sofa. But those two things are really handy. So if you're in the gym, this is really good for you. Let's start off with the bench now. This one's a low level one, it's a good one to start you, get you going, okay? And it's a good one to teach you what to do with spinal neutral and keeping your spinal straight and stable when you're trying to lift. So, go into one of these. Have your hips sitting just off the end so you can hinge at that point there, okay? This is quite nice because it supports your back. You don't have to worry about suspending yourself in space like a deadlift, so you can sort of lie there like that. Now you can either have your hands like this and do it, or you can have your hands forward or gripping on, something like that, Doesn't really, I don't really mind. But what you're trying to aim for is hip extension without back extension. We are going to do some back extension, but this one is about stability, hence the load is very nice and light. So, your spine needs to be neutral. You've got to think, I don't want, when I raise my leg, I don't want to arch my back. See that movement there? I don't want to go and do that, because I don't want you doing that when you are trying to do hip extension in a deadlift, right? There are other things we're going to do back extension for, but this one, it's a stability brain training one. When you do that, if you stay in neutral and you turn on and brace your core here, so you tighten your abdominals here without holding your breath, and the way you can do that is maybe think about holding a weed to 30%, so you're using a deep abdominals to try and stabilize, not just holding your breath. When you do that, and then you lift one leg up, You'll notice if you feel in your lower back, you'll feel those big spinal extensor muscles kick in. They're working. So there's your stability, there's your strengthening straight away. Now you don't have to lift that leg very high. You can just go one at a time, raise it up until you feel like those muscles are really working and you go as high just before you feel like you're about to lose your neutral spine here. So when you feel like, oh, I'm going to arch my back to raise my leg up, to try and get my leg high, we have to arch my back, that's where you stop. All right. So you think, core on, brace, use your buttock and your hamstrings to raise your leg as high as you can go. You might have to think about this quite hard to try and control here. You can see I'm sort of trying to think about it. how do I stop my back arching and then down again. Now you're going to feel this big time in your butt, which is great. You need your glutes to be able to lift. So that's good and that gets the tone going. But the main thing is trying to create static muscle or isometric muscle work in your lower back which strengthens up that big lower back segment so when you go and do a deadlift movement here that's conditioned to be switched on and stable in that position because you're doing hip extension it's the same position okay from flexion of the hip to extension of the hip Okay? It's just way more complicated and hard to do when you're standing up. So this, and if you've got a weak back, it's even harder. So this one here, your first one, is a really good entry point in to just get those muscles firing. I would definitely start one leg at a time. Okay? This one does progress into two legs, but it's a much harder exercise. So if you're going to go into two legs, you really have to grip on and do this sort of work. Okay? It's much more difficult. Stick to one leg for this, because then you can progress through these exercises, you know, doing a double type thing. Always stick with one with that for this type of problem. So, that's your first one. Then, get that bench out of the way. 
what you can do is move on to the BOSU. Now these are really handy. Now this one, again, is hip extension, all right? But it's basically, instead of raising your legs, I'm now gonna have to raise it back, because guess what? When I do a deadlift or a squat, I'm gonna have to use my back. So it's a bit different than that. My feet are gonna be on the ground. So this is a nice little sort of segue into that. So this one, what you do is you have your tummy on that right about just the middle. Now what the, the BOSU is gonna design, design to do is so you can move your pelvis that position like that, okay? Which means you're gonna go from a sort of tilted forward position and then you're gonna do hip extension, right? So you're, again, trying to learn to stabilize here, not arch your back here, but extend at the hip. So you might, I'm gonna extend that way and bring myself from here to there, okay? And if I feel those muscles, I can feel them working. I've just gotta make sure that I don't go and arch my back like this and do back extension. That's the last exercise, so we're going to save that to last. We're still trying to learn isometric work in the lower back and hip extension, we're trying to learn that stabilization, being at the hips or hinge at the hips without all this complication of load of doing a deadlift. So this is a nice one to do. You just got to get your pelvis in the right position. You got to think, I'm going to brace my core. I want to keep this static and I'll use my buttocks and my hamstrings at the same time and lift to there, and then down again. So I can pivot on the BOSU. The BOSU is quite forgiving. I can do that, and the roundness of it means I can tilt over that. Hinge at the buttocks, hinge at the hip joint if you like, and use the BOSU sort of roundness, and because it's a bit squishy, as I can come up and down quite easy. So if I'm a bit weak, I've got a bit of forgiveness here, which is a nice way to do it. So again, it's like one of those sort of segues into, can I go from keeping this stable and bending here into extension? So I've got my glutes and hammies on, the back is relatively straight, all right, but on, and then I've just got to work on, can I get my head in the right position as well? So once you've got all that sorted, then try and be a straight spine through there. So then I pivot down and forward, and lift up to there. So it's like the top end part of the deadlift. So from there to there is what I'm going to do in the deadlift from being upright to then bending forward. Okay, and that's the crucial part of that movement. I'm going from here to there. Okay, and back again, getting that right. Same as sort of squat, you sort of that initial movement there. Okay, where you're trying to be stable through here and move at the legs, this is going to help you get the strength here to be actually able to do it. All right, great one. Last one is then going from static in your lower back to moving in your lower back. Now, don't get me wrong, in a deadlift and squat, you don't move into lots of extension in your lower back. That's true, but you need strength still in those muscles. So what this one will do is just work on simple muscle strengthening and contracting those muscles in a different way. Obviously we don't put any load on this because we can move our spine from flexion extension as long as you don't put too much load through. So for this one, what you do is use a Swiss ball again, something to drape over. With this one, I'm not worried about hip extension anymore. I'll still use my buttocks and hammies to lift up, but what I'm gonna try and do is do back extension. So I'm gonna go into flexion, okay? Leave my hands behind me by my sides and start off like this and go into extension. You can feel that, you can see how it's jacked up into extension there and then slowly roll down into there. This will also give you some strengthening through your thoracis, which is another big lifter through your back. So the big long muscles that go to either side of your spine, you probably see in bodybuilders that are really big, those muscles also help you with your lift, okay? And there's a nice way, a nice supported way for your spine to start working on some strengthening. And again, it's not for everyone, but it's fantastic for people who are weak, who need a starting point to go, I need to get from core work to actually moving and being able to lift. Well, this is the way you sort of do it, well, a great way to do it, okay? Now you can advance this a little bit. That's a sort of like a, if you look at this one, this is what we call, um, going into extension with your hands behind like a skydive. If you're here, that's what we call a T. 
So if you're coming down and going up there, it's just a little bit harder, and involves more thoracic, and then if you go into a Y, it's even more, and that gets really hard, and that's sort of moving more and more muscles up the spine. That's if you want to advance it. To be honest, I'd stick with the hands behind you to try and just focus on your lower back, keep it nice and working, and then those three, over time, we're talking a few weeks, give you enough strength to start working on your hip hinge, okay? And by then, you've probably done things like bridges, that sort of thing. So then hopefully, by the time you get to here and start relearning that deadlifting movement and that squat movement, you've got some muscle to work with. Hope that helps you. See you next time.